Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Starburst Galaxy to query iceberg snapshot tables and see what happens when we modify an iceberg table. I'll also show you how iceberg time travel works. This video accompanies the Starburst tutorial of the same name, which you can read through if you prefer written instructions. If you plan on following along, please make sure you've completed the prerequisite tutorial titled Configure a Starburst Galaxy Data Lake Catalog and Schema. In that tutorial, you'll create a catalog that connects to an Amazon S3 bucket owned and maintained by Starburst so that you don't have to worry about bringing your own data storage. OK, let's get started. I'm going to begin by creating a table that I can use for my experimentation. I can use DDL in the Query Editor to create the table. I've set my cluster, catalog, and schema ahead of time so that I don't have to worry about using the fully qualified table name in my SQL. Here's the SQL that I'm using to create a table called Phone Provisioning. Notice that I've set the type as iceberg, of course, and it's partitioned by the event day. OK, let's run this SQL. And I can see that it completed successfully down here. At this point, I just have an empty table, but I want to make sure that a snapshot was created when I created the table. I can query the snapshots metadata table to see. I'm just going to run a simple select star on this one. So let's run that. And my query output shows a single row, which is a snapshot for the table creation. If I click on the summary link here, I'm provided with some more information about the snapshot. You can see from the summary that no data change has happened and that there are zero total records because we haven't added any records yet. I'm going to go ahead and copy the Trino query ID, which is right here, because we're going to use it in a moment. Starburst Galaxy includes a query insights page that allows you to review your query history. You can use the query ID provided by the snapshots table as a filter to trace back to the query that produced a specific version of the table. Let's go over to Query Insights to see how it's done. So I just click Query here and then Query Insights. And then I can click Show Filters and Add Filter. And I'm going to filter by the query ID. And then I can just paste the query ID that I copied in there and apply filter. And now you can see this is the query that I just ran to create my table. And then I can click on the query ID for more information if I'd like. But let's go back to the query editor and add some records to our table. OK, I've got the SQL here to add two records from a week ago to capture the initial orders for two new phone numbers. Let's run that, and then I'll check to confirm that the records were added as expected. OK, so it completed successfully, and you can see that there are two rows here. So now I'm going to just query the table to see what it looks like. And there you can see the two new records that I added. Now let's verify that another snapshot was created because we did modify the table. So I'm going to run this query against the snapshots again. And there you can see that another snapshot was created. So that's great. Now I'm going to add two more records from six days ago to capture the activation activity for the same two phone numbers. So here's my SQL right here, and I'm going to run that. So now you can see two more rows were added. And just to verify, I'm going to run my select star to see that the rows were added. OK, that looks good. And then I'm going to create the snapshots table again. And you can see now I have three snapshots, as expected. OK, I'm going to add one final record to the table. And this one is going to be from five days ago. And it captures an error that was reported on phone number 2222222. So let's do that one right here. OK, looks good. One row was added. And I'm just going to verify one more time. OK, you can see we now have five records. And then if I check the snapshots again, OK, now we have four snapshots. Great. OK, so I think we have a pretty good handle on the fact that Iceberg records changes to a table as snapshots. So far, the only modifications we've made were inserts. Now let's take a look at how Iceberg handles updates. Just a quick note that Iceberg cannot perform an in-place update to the underlying immutable data files. So when an update occurs, Iceberg has to create a delete file referencing the location in the existing file that contains the records to be updated. For this reason, it's more appropriate to think of updates as overwrites, and you'll see that they actually are recorded as overwrites. I've got two updates to run here, and I'll run them one at a time. So let's do the first one. OK, now let's do the second one. OK, great. We'll check the table to see that those updates were made. OK, 
and you can see that they were. Now let's look at the snapshots table again. Okay, so you can see that we do have the new snapshots, and if you look closely at the operation column, you can see that they were listed as overwrites, just as we had expected. If we take a look at the summary for one of the newest snapshots, we can get a closer look at how updates are handled by Iceberg. Notice total position deletes equals two, which indicates the two records were marked for deletion. This is due to Iceberg's inability to perform in-place updates to the underlying files. Fortunately, both of these deletes were placed in a single delete file. Closely following those deletes, added records equals two indicates the records deleted are being re-added as essentially new inserts. As before, these were assembled into a single new data file. Okay, so we've covered snapshots pretty thoroughly, but what can we do with snapshots? One really useful feature is time travel, which I'm going to show you now. It allows you to query prior versions of a table using the snapshot ID or a timestamp. Let's copy the snapshot ID from the second record in this table. And now I'm gonna put this snapshot ID into a query I have prepared already here. So let's scroll down here and you can see the snapshot ID. And what this query is gonna do is it's going to allow me to look at a previous version of the table. So let's run that. And there you can see this was when I had just added the first two records to my table. Now let's use time travel to roll back to a previous version of the table. Let's pretend that we mistakenly deleted some important records, but before I run this equal to delete the records, I'm gonna copy the snapshot ID from the most recent snapshot that I have. So let's go back to the snapshots table so I can grab that ID. Okay, so this is the most recent snapshot down here, so I'm gonna copy that ID, and now, I am going to mistakenly delete some records, so let's run this query here. Okay, it finished, and now I'm just gonna check that those deletes were made. And you can see that the deletes were made because now I only have two rows here. So now let's go ahead and roll back to a previous version of the table, um, assuming that we had mistakenly deleted those. So I'm going to replace this snapshot ID with the last one that I had copied. And now let's run that. Okay, and now that I've done that, I'm going to review the table again to see what happened. Okay, perfect. We're back to the version of the table that we wanted, so we can just pretend like those deletes never happened. And that's all for this video. I'd encourage you to play around a bit more with the snapshot files and time travel to get really comfortable with those features. Thanks for watching.